celebrate the feast of Saint Therese and the Child Jesus, said to be one of the greatest saints of our of our time, of our modern times, a time of mercy, a time of the love of love of God, focus on the love of God. And this is really, you know, we think of the humility of Saint Therese, her littleness, Therese of a little child Jesus, and certainly humility was one of her great greatest virtues, but perhaps charity was really the, the number one. In fact, that's what she called herself. I will be, it will be love in the heart of the church. That is my vocation, she said. Love, the love was the, the key and love was really the explanation and um, description of her whole character. She was so full of love for Jesus, for the person of Jesus, the divine person of Jesus, so caught up in love for Jesus. And you see that in the journey of her, her life as she's trying to, to become a sister, and she wants to be a sister at 16, was it 16 years old. Was it even even earlier, 15, later, 15 years old? Amazing, amazing to, to want to offer her life up at that early age. And she was so, so totally given over to, to give herself entirely to Jesus. Even she swept her, swept her father away as well with that strong sentiment. And he want, his, her loving father wanted to give her, his daughter whatever she really wanted. And she, he, of course, he knew what was good for her. And so he went along with uh, her, her, his, his daughter's desires and traveled to go see the Pope, to do, go to the ends of the earth she would have done to obtain the prize of her vocation of offering herself totally to Jesus in Carmel. In Carmel, she saw that as the, as the uh, pinnacle of offering her love for Jesus. And that's what one of her superiors said. She is all Jesus's, she said. She is all Jesus when she was talking to another sister or another bishop uh, how to describe Saint Therese. She was just totally caught up in love for Jesus. And that characterized the effusion, the, this desire she, she had, a strong desire for martyrdom and to not just any kind of martyrdom, she said, but every kind of martyrdom, to suffer every kind of suffering for, for our Lord. And that's what love does. Love, love does incredible, unbelievable, heroic things, things that we can't even imagine. That's, you know, we see that in Jesus and Mary, and we see that in the saints too. Saints who can do things and suffer things that we can't even, can't even conceive ourselves being able to do heroic, truly and miraculous, miraculous things that love can accomplish. And St. Therese had that. I've seen this in a few other holy women in, in my journeys. And at times I would ask them for prayers for things that were kind of that were beyond me, things that I'd prayed for and I wouldn't, wouldn't obtain because I didn't have the love that, that these people had. And this love, unfortunately, includes uh, Fortunately, maybe includes suffering, and these uh, these holy women were were willing to suffer, and when they did, I you know was a beneficiary of of some of the miraculous things that these these uh, people did, and you can see in uh, these these uh, women that I know uh, that were willing to suffer and that were full of love for for their fellow men and for God, uh, they. Um, uh, weren't perfect. You know, they had their faults, and you might say, "Oh, you know, uh, they're not perfect. They're not saints." Uh, and yet, I can see that God answered their prayers. God gave them anything they wanted because they were willing to suffer, and because they were so full of love, even though they had their imperfections. You know, God doesn't always take away our imperfections to keep us humble, or whatever other reasons He He has. But. We're talking Saint Therese, who really didn't have too many imperfections, you know, and even the perfection imperfections she had, she she gloried in them. She, you know, she was happy to see her imperfections, uh, you know, and when she was a little impatient at times, when she wasn't, you know, uh, um, perfectly observant in every in every little thing of her religious life, she even, you know, took joy in that that she could. And offer her repentance to God and say say she was sorry, 
and and to to prove that she wasn't perfect, and and so you know she she would make her her imperfections into into uh, stepping stones for greater love for God, throwing herself upon God. And this is what she did. She threw herself into the loving hands of, of the Heavenly Father. And I think this is maybe one of the most important messages and lessons we need to learn from the life of St. Therese in this, in this modern time, to always see God in the uh, truth of his loving uh, father, fatherliness, uh, which covers our sins if we, if we trust in his mercy, if we trust in his love. Uh, we, you know, we can go to our death and go, go to our our Lord in our sins and and know that He will be there to embrace us and if we are repentant and if we trust in His mercy and love. That Saint Therese was so urgent in wanting to communicate this message to sinners of this time that God will embrace us anybody, no matter how many sins they've committed, how bad they were, if they come in repentance and trust in God, that he loves them despite um, their their sins, if they will only repent and they will only trust in him. And so we need to do, to, to have that uh, that picture and that, that knowledge that God is that way. Uh, and St. Therese really, really teaches us that, to trust in the love of our Heavenly Father, um, to cover our sins, to make us holy, to give us hope and to take away all our fears of death, take our fears away f of God. And that will truly make us fly and truly make us uh, coast towards uh, greater holiness and pleasing God. He wants us to trust in Him, trust in His mercy and His love and grow in holiness in that way.